In the video today, we're answering a viewer question because Jesse McClellan asks us, why does wood burn instead of melt? It seems like everyone knows that things are solid at certain temperatures. Then, if you heat them up, they'll become a liquid. Heating it further will then turn that substance into a gas. This elementary truism of science is every grade school student's claim to fame at their science fair. At some point, however, every person growing up looks at a burning fire and says, well, what gives with that? The problem with melting wood revolves around what combustion is and what temperature the combustion of wood happens at. Combustion is simply a chemical reaction that takes place where the combustible material, in this case wood, in the presence of an oxidizer, usually the air around the fire, changes its chemical composition and decomposes the material into other chemicals. The process is one that's exothermic, as such light and heat can be released. Wood is mostly made up of things like cellulose, lignin, and water. As wood combusts, it's broken down into products like charcoal, water, methanol, and carbon dioxide. Unlike water turning back to ice, if you cool down the resulting products of burning wood, it obviously does not change back into its original composition. Thus, you get all of the ash that is left in your fireplace after that romantic evening with your special someone. All materials that combust will have a natural temperature at which the process will begin taking place. The higher the temperature, the quicker the process becomes, usually. If that temperature is lower than the temperature at which the material will melt, the material will never naturally melt because it just turns into other chemicals. As for wood, it will begin a process known as pyrolysis at temperatures around 500 to 600 degrees Fahrenheit, that's around 300 degrees Celsius. Pyrolysis is also an exothermic reaction that tends to be self-sustaining. At these temperatures, wood will begin giving off up to 100 chemicals, including methane and methanol, the same stuff they put as additives in gasoline, that will begin to burn. Once those chemicals begin burning, they will increase the temperature, and the remaining char, the burned black bits present after the fire goes out, left behind will begin to further decompose. It will turn into things like calcium, potassium, and magnesium. And now for a bonus fact. Speaking of wood, ever wonder how things like wood become petrified? Well, want to know more. When any living being dies and begins to decay, an oxygen-rich environment is usually present. This environment is full of microorganisms, insects, and fungi that begin to colonize and break down the organic matter. The stuff left over, like cellulose and lignin for trees, or bones and cartilage for animals, is further broken down and has its chemical composition changed by other microorganisms. The end result of this process is the carbon-rich organic goodness that award-winning gardeners everywhere use as a fertilizer. When an organism dies in an environment that lacks oxygen, for instance if it was covered by ash from a volcano, it is deprived of an environment that is conductive to normal decay. This leads to the organism staying mostly intact for long periods of time, which in turn encourages the very slow degradation process that allows for the wonder that is petrification. Groundwater rich in minerals will start to impregnate all of the pores and cellular spaces inside the organic material. These minerals will crystallize and settle into the shapes of the cells and other structures that are slowly breaking down. When the last remnants of organic material finally change their chemical composition, all that is left is the stone-like fossil of the original living organism created by the crystallization of the minerals present. Not all of the organic matter is lost, however. Although most petrified plants are rock-like in weight and density, about 1-15% of the matter is still organic. Wood is one of the most common types of things to become petrified. In fact, there are several known petrified forests throughout the world, including petrified forests in 11 of the 50 states in the United States and 19 other countries worldwide. The structure of these petrified fossils depends on the minerals present in the groundwater that penetrated the wood. The most common are silica-based as silicate minerals, make up about 90% of the Earth's crust and therefore are some of the most prevalent in groundwater. Some common silica minerals involved in petrification include quartz, calcite, pyrite, siderite, iron carbonate, and apatite, calcium phosphate. The process of petrifying wood ultimately takes millions of years. For instance, the petrified forest in Arizona is believed to have been created by trees that grew over 225 million years ago. As to how it formed, it would appear trees fell in a rainforest almost 100 miles away. Streams containing sediment and volcanic silica ash carried the logs downstream and quickly covered them. The process of petrification then began its slow magic. After millions of years, the tectonic uplift that formed the Rocky Mountains combined with erosion uncovered these wonders of nature. Currently, there is about 100 feet of uncovered petrified trees populating this forest. Every year, rainwater exposes additional petrified trees. 
That said, while it usually takes millions of years, a way to quickly petrify wood has been discovered by one Dr. Yunsung Shin and his colleagues from the Department of Energy at the Pacific Northwest National Laboratory. Using their method, they can petrify wood in a matter of days. The process starts by taking wood and soaking it in a bath of acid for about a day. Next, it gets soaked in a bathtub full of silica solution. Once air dried, they bake the wood in argon gas at temperatures of about 1,400 degrees centigrade for two hours. When cooled, the process yields perfectly petrified wood, that's silicon carbide. So I really hope you found that video interesting. If you did, please do hit that thumbs up button below and do not forget to subscribe. Brand new videos just like this every day of the week. For more from me, why not check out a podcast I do called The Brain Food Show. If you search Brain Food one word, wherever you get your podcasts, you will find it. And as always, thank you for watching.